What's going on guys? Welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. I'm MD. Today we're going to be building a really cool tank, one that I've never done before. Usually I build tanks with like lots of plants and like a bit of hardscape, mainly plants though. But in this one I'm switching it around. There's going to be a lot of rock and not that many plants because we are making a Lake Tanganyika biotope style. Not exactly, but you know, something similar. Lots of rock work, really cool sickly community tank should be awesome. I'm a little bit apprehensive because it's so, so new, but I've just got to go for it. For example, as we look around my studios here, like you can see like planted with some wood and rocks, but mainly plants, plants, just plants absolutely everywhere, <laughs> all up here as well, even onto the discus as well, big planted discus tank. And this right here is the tank that we're going to be using. It's a four foot by two foot and we've got a strip light at the top at the moment, which don't get me wrong, it's a really good light and it grows plants great, but I want to go for more of a spotlight effect. So I've bought down here, look, I've got these, which are LED floodlights. They are 30 watt, they're quite bright and they're like the cool sunlight color. So not yellow, like more of a whitish light. A couple of plugs as well, so we can fit some longer cables to them. Because what I want to do is have a strip like this hanging from the ceiling but I don't want to have it as a bar, I want to have it as those spots. So I've got this piece of wood look, which I'm going to sort of hang all the way across with those lights on, paint it black. It should look pretty good. So that is sort of how it's going to go. You can see there, they just sat on it. I'll centralize, centralize, center them. <laughs> I'll find the middle points for each one, put them in, drill a hole each side, and then I can put the, oh, oh, <laughs> put the wires through each bit of the wood so that then it runs along the top, flip it all around. And then yeah, I can hang it nicely up the top here and it's going to give some really good spotlight effects. Paint it black as well, of course. Both lights are on, screwed in place, equal distances, which should give us a really good effect. Now the next job is to just lift them up and I wanna drill a hole through here so that way the power lead can just go straight through without having to wrap around. It'll probably just look a little bit neater. It's not gonna make a huge difference, but it's small details, isn't it? Okay, we're looking good so far, kind of. I mean, once it's all up, it'll look good once it's black as well. And then what I need to do is just obviously extend these cables so that they can reach a plug. And for that, I just got this, they call it pond, pond wire, is it? Pond free core. So basically it's got, you know, three wires, three wires, stick a plug on it, and then we can plug it all in, hang it up, paint it black, put it on. Ah, there we go, looking good, I think. So what I've done is taken the cables, run them over the top with just some black electrical tape, which you can barely see. I mean, it's shining with this camera because we're up high, but obviously if I come down to like eye level, all you can really see is that, the, the, the cable down the back. I've done a wire either side just to keep the balance to stop it trying to sort of twist. Cables running up, 
couple of eye hooks. Yeah, I think it looks good. Now I could adjust the height if I need to as well, just by making uh, the 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 line shorter by tying knots in it or, or whatever, or, you know, re-looping it round these hooks so that it just comes higher and higher. But at the moment, I think I'll just keep it like that. I'm not sure if that's too bright at the moment. It might be. There's a lot of light coming out there. There's more light on this tank than any other tank I've got, to be honest. But it does look pretty good, doesn't it? I'm well happy with that. So total costs, uh, so it was £30 or $40 for those two lights. A couple of plugs. Well, you're looking at about £50 to $60, 60 euros, that sort of amount. Like, it's pretty good going, isn't it, for something that looks pretty cool. If we step back, look. You can see that I've got obviously my black bottom, black light. I like it. Cheap and uh, doable. Obviously guys, I can just get hold of expensive lights. Like companies will just send them to me to be honest, but that's not what I'm about. I'm about showing you guys some cool ways of doing it. And I'm not gonna lie, I really love these. I've never had a problem growing awesome plants with them either. I mean, you've only got to look here at my uh, Amazon aquarium to see. It's exactly the same lights there, look. I've just hooked them around the back but look at the plant growth. This is, the sag is just going nuts. Look at these awesome Colombian tetras as well. They've beefed right up since I've got them. They're huge now, such cool fish. They now think I'm gonna feed them, but yeah, look at it. Look at this, the Ludwigia all growing out the top. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah, I'll leave a link to these in the uh, description, guys, and the first comment, so if you're interested in getting some, you can. And my plant grow out tanks as well down here. This is where I just cultivate plants. I've got another one and on this one opposite as well, where I keep a lot of the shorter plants. Another one, but like the 20 watt one instead of the 30 watt. But look, it's amazing, isn't it? Right, so this is great. Lighting's done. Uh, filtration sorted as well. I'll talk more about that later on when we fill the tank up with water and turn them on for the first time. I've basically got two cycled canister filters from the previous build all in there. Um, the water's been draining. This has all been done in such a short space of time that they're not gonna be sat sitting for long, so all the bacteria is gonna be good, ready for when we fill the tank up with water soon. But now we're at the stage where we can get our first rocks in. Oh, I'm out of breath. We got a lot to choose from there. I mean, they're big rocks. Look at some of it, like that's that big. That one there is an absolute beast. We won't need all of them, but it's good to lay them all out and just choose the ones you want, isn't it? I mean, like, it's not a massive, massive tank, is it, at the end of the day? Yeah, so we've got some ones that got flat edges on it, which help to sit down to stand it up, but I'm probably gonna need to like use several in like a tripod formation to get height and things like that, because I think stood up on their own, they won't be high enough for the back one. Basically what I want is a dual island, obviously, and when you do that, you tend to want to do like a big island and a small island. Maybe I'll switch it around and do a small one to a big one. Nah, that wouldn't look right, wouldn't look right. <laughs> Okay, so I think we're starting to get somewhere. Now I'm getting some good shapes, I'm really liking them, especially liking this one so far, the way I've managed to lock all of that together. Look, none of that's going anywhere, I don't even need to glue it, it's like properly solid. You know the tap test, if you can hit it and it not move and smash your whole tank, it's good. <laughs> so yeah, I'm loving that one, not this one so much, but I'm just gonna ignore it for the minute because I feel like I need a little bit more height on this one, maybe another piece sort of coming up a bit higher. Maybe not, maybe I just need that one smaller because I mean, this is nearly halfway the height of the whole aquarium, isn't it? I need to remember to keep the front panes of the glass of the aquascape clear, look like this side and this side because the filters actually push water down and back around themselves to suck up the waste. So, and it makes it easier of cleaning if you just keep it clear. But yeah, I'm just gonna carry on now. I'll keep you in this view so we can like see how it progresses. Okay, I think we've nailed it. Um, I really like that. Those lights look so good with everything, don't they? Proper spotlight in it, but I really like that so far. With something like this though, it's probably a good idea just to go away and then oh, I just I just walked into the tripod. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's best to just come away from it and maybe come back 
So I'm going to sleep on it and then see how I feel in the morning. But so far, I'm liking that. See the angles I've gone for? And then the odd one outcropping that way. Maybe turn that slightly. But then I've got that one there just to give it a little bit of a... I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying now. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> right it's the next day guys it's very early i've just walked into the studio i've seen one rock out of everything that i'm not happy with and it's this rock here i think it's making everything look too neat and i think if we have it going another way or something in that gap it'll just break up that sort of symmetry if you like because i've been looking at the raw sort of underwater footage of lake tanganyika and it's not neat it's not tidy it's not laid in sort of lines like you would expect on rivers and things like that it's a lake at the end of the day stuff just eroded and falling down randomly much more like this piece here which has got that 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 then this one is all going to to i don't know i just want to change it so i will haha <laughs> <laughs> there we go look it's a small difference but i think it's made all the difference if that makes sense there's there's less flow now i mean we've got directions but we're always counter counter acting them I guess but I don't know I just really like how that looks do you agree like we, from this angle it's time to get some sand in to be honest isn't it and from around here look we've got a nice little gap there'll be areas for the fish to go in and out of you can see them going over the top there may be something more to add in that middle section perhaps something down here I don't know we can get the sand in and then see how it's looking but before I put the sand in I just want to use the foam cutter here just to cut closer to the rock so there's like less polystyrene I, I don't want the sand you see getting brushed off of it and showing it and if it's tucked right back I think that'll work better but it's good doing it how we started with because it you know showed me where I needed to be with it and now we can cut it I mean you can use a Stanley blade or something but I've got this so I might as well use it when guardium leviosa <laughs> There we go, ready to go. All pulled back nicely, looking neat and tidy. Now it's time to add the sand. I keep all that in my other studio. Okay, this is my other studio. For those of you that don't usually watch my videos, it's your first time maybe, maybe hit the subscribe. I mean, there's loads of updates coming and soon I'm gonna be doing a big maintenance session on absolutely everything. It's all looking so, so good, but it could look a lot better, especially the Buddha tank look doing well I've just recently hacked everything back on it but it's starting to grow back nicely fish are doing great but the sand okay so I've got loads of different types of substrate lots of different things just dotted about everywhere different gradings colors this side I've got what I think I'm going to use as the main base it's got like a yellowy sort of sand which I think will suit Lake Tanganyika really well I've got some other pieces of like natural gravel and stuff but I mean, it should be quite a clean look with a little bit of detail, not tons of detail and then clean. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. What I mean is it should be like pretty sort of similar grain sizes. I think that's what I mean. Oh yes, we're looking really good, but I feel like it's a little too uniform in terms of coloration on the grains. So down here, I've got some more. I've got this one here, which is like whitey gray. Now, under the light, it's almost like white, to be honest. It's just looking gray because it's shadowed in a bag. And then this side, I've got like pool filter sand, which actually has like a little bit of everything in it. And it's got some darker bits as well, just a little bit more detail, but it's all the same grain size, so it should look pretty good. there we go looking good i mean it's not a massive difference but it's those small details that do make the difference in my opinion so you can see there we've got the more sort of orangey flex the the whiter flex the darker so it's just just adding variety because that's what from doing my research it seems to be on the on the bed of lake tanganyika but there's obviously areas that look different to others it's a massive lake but from the area i was looking at mainly there's a lot of clean sand i noticed some completely barren areas as well where it was just a ton of shells and that's where the shell dollars live that is littered like you wouldn't believe like naturally littered obviously i mean like 
just mess everywhere. Right, I think that was a really good point just to fill the whole thing up and get the filters running. And these are the filters that we're gonna be using. So this one here is a very cheap budget one. Um, it's like half the price of this one, which is a more expensive one. This one's got a built-in heater and a built-in um, sort of pre-filter. So you can just slide this out and clean it. It makes it a lot easier. I mean, you're getting what you pay for, but if you can afford the more expensive one, go for it. If you can't, just get the cheaper one and you just have to do a little bit more maintenance, taking it out, taking it apart when you want to service the filter. But then, you know, after the initial sort of few months, you, you won't need to be doing that very often at all. I mean, this one hasn't been cleaned in about six months. I just took it out and had a look then. It's perfectly good inside, if I'm honest. Just rinsed it out a little bit. Now, I don't change anything inside these filters either. I just use what it comes with, to be honest. I don't stock any of my tanks sort of highly. So therefore, I don't think I need to like boost things up. If you do, then you might need to change some of the media inside for something a bit more sort of heavy duty. I don't know. <laughs> Mine just have the sponges in and then the normal sort of plasticky media that's at the bottom. Works well though. In terms of the outlets, so yeah, like I explained in a previous video, I like to have them either side on this tank because it's peninsula. So we've got water that will come out the top, it'll go along, it rotates around, it comes back on itself and gets taken out there. And that happens on both sides. Now these inlet and outlets don't come with those filters, you have to buy them separately. I'll leave links to all the filters, the lights, the inlet and outlets, just so you guys can get hold of them if you want to as well. But first of all, let's fill everything up. There we go, so far so good. I think that looks so good, doesn't it? I love it. I mean, it's still a bit murky, obviously. It will go crystal clear, but I'm not getting that sort of shimmering effect that I wanna get from the spotlights. And that's because there's not really a lot of surface agitation. Now I could raise the pipes, but it might look a bit odd at the back. And also when the water sort of goes up and down in levels, it splash it, blah, blah, blah. It's easier if I just put a little power head in that back corner. I think that'll work really well. Plus it'll give us just more flow in general on the, on the tank and not stop waste collecting and everything like that. It'll get it swept up into the water column and then the filters can do their job of taking it out. Yeah, we'll do that. Right guys, it's now been 24 hours, well, no, not 24 hours, 16 hours since we filled the tank up. It's crystal, oh my God, it looks so good. Are you kidding me? Look at the shimmer, look at everything. I tell you what, there's gonna be some really nice green algae growing on these rocks. That's just gonna give it even more real realism in probably a very short space of time because they're, they're high powered. They are high, the highest powered lights I've had on a tank with them set that close. So yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? Okay, so what are we gonna do for planting? Now, many sort of traditionalists would not put any plants in this tank because in Lake Tanganyika, where the cichlids actually live doesn't have any plants, but the lake does have plants. Now, it's a massive lake, so at the edges, where it's more shallow, there's quite muddy areas and you get quite a lot of plants growing there. I'll put some stuff up on screen so you can you know, show you an example. So what I'm thinking is we could do something quite cool with the tank. I'd like to put a little bit of planting up in the top corner or top side, <laughs> it's peninsula, so the top part, the part closest to the wall is what I'm trying to say. And then as we come out into the sort of middle of the lake, it can be completely clear and open with the shells on there for the shell dwellers, that sort of thing. So we've got a kind of mix of the lake then in one tank. Okay, it's not ultra realistic, but it'll add a nice bit of green. It'll help the, the water quality. It'll be just, in general, it'll be better for the fish, for the tank, for everything, I think anyway. Purists would be like, you can't do that, but you know, I like plants and I'm not gonna go silly though, just a little bit of detail. So yeah, just planting in that back area and just creeping along a little bit into the into the front area and then completely open all over here. Now the plants that I've seen that best represent you know, the lake so far is this. This is the Helanthium quad um, and also the Sagittaria as well, although I'm not gonna touch this tank. I really need to top that up. <laughs> I'm not gonna get it from here. I'm gonna get it around from this tank where it's growing nice and short because of the light intensity. That means it will stay pretty short as well. We've got some really good ones at the back there that have already uprooted, nice white roots. So yeah, let's get those in.
so what we need to do now is separate the plants. Look at this huge bunch of sag that I got. <laughs> I found that in there. That was a clump I put together. Then all the rest just sort of spread out from it. But yeah, this looks great, didn't it? So I need to separate it out though, because obviously we can't plant it like that. And it's easy, you just break it at the bottom and peel it up. Some aquasol there, I need to wash that out so it doesn't go in the tank. But yeah, look, there's so many plants here. Oh, it's gonna take a while, but it's worth it. If you just plant it all like that, it, it won't be as good. Okay, there we go, it's just subtle. You know, there's not a lot going on there, but it will thicken up loads in time. Well, either it will, or the cichlids will drag it all up and there'll be nothing left, but that's okay, whatever they want to do with it. Now, there's no nutrients in this sand, so I'll obviously put some root tabs in there. Um, you don't need to see me do that, but I will do that. <laughs> Good light here, which means that all of these plants will actually stay low and compact as well. They won't go grow really leggy, although it would be quite nice if they, the sag does at that end, but who knows, it might not even last. Right, we're pretty much ready to put some fish in, I think. Let's have a little look round. Yeah, so down from this way, I mean, I've just stirred it all up, so it's a little bit dusty again, but look, see, just some subtleties, a little bit of that green in the background, but I've, I think around this whole area is where a lot of the cichlids are gonna stay, and we can put the um, some of the shells in that middle section, maybe a couple at the front here as well. That's gonna look great, isn't it? And then it'll be interesting to see how they behave once all the sag and that grows in. Obviously, there's gonna be big updates of this tank as we go along, so make sure you're subscribed and notified for that. <laughs> and maybe give us a like if you're enjoying the video so far. Right, anyway, let's just go get these fish. <laughs> there you are! <laughs> Matt? Yeah? <laughs> oh, you sound way too awake. <laughs> Do you have some fish for me? Uh, Why are we doing this? Sorry, hang on. Look at that. Okay, so this is the group. Sorry, this is Matt, guys. You saw him in the last video. We picked <laughs> out the fish. They're all collected here nicely for me. We are at Maidenhead Aquatics, Wellington but Taunton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> oh, yes, they look so cool. So, this is the whole group. Yeah, so we've got we've got a few more on Julie Decromus so here. I haven't picked those out yet. Okay, um, right, I just okay. kept them all in together. Um, but yeah, we've got a nice group of uh, shell dwellers on the bottom. Is the baby one still in there? Yeah, he's still. I'm probably going to have to give you the shell because the baby lives in the shell. I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I was going to say I don't have any shells, so do, shall I take those? Or yeah, yeah. Do, we'll is there those. more I can get? There should be some more around the shop somewhere. I'll oh, go and I hunt do. them down. That'd be cool. Yeah, the tank's all ready to go because all the filters have been running for months and months anyway, so we're all good Perfect. with that. Um, did you get any sardines in at all? Because someone said to me about, I didn't have anything for the open water. Yeah, so we've only got a couple, so we've got more on order. Um, okay. So there's a couple of females or, well, they might be males, they might be females. They've not coloured up yet, but that's what a female will look like, that sort of darker coloration. Right. Um, you know, this one's got a bit of colour coming to the fins and stuff, so it might yeah. turn into a male. Okay. Um, but yeah, turn just... into? Hang on. Well, <laughs> he is male. He might just show up, show as a male. Though, oh, hopefully. gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I was thinking to that, because you told me about those fish that sort of change sex and stuff. Yeah, there so. are a few fish that will change sex, but they're, no, they're not They're, they're not, not them. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, I suppose we better just sort of bag. Oh, there's that fairy court. There's fairy sick there, isn't it? That's it, yeah. He's gone now, but uh, <laughs> there, he, there he is. It's a girl, <laughs> is it a boy? Um, It'll be tricky to tell. I'll be able to tell when I get him out. It's probably a boy. Okay, brilliant. God, they look great, don't they? They're so cool. And you can easily forget that they've got that nice sort of yellow and blue on them as well. The oh. pattern really attracts and really sort of catches your eye. Because I did, I did some DIY. Um, Lighting, nice. very high lighting, it's a spotlight, so it's got a really good shimmer effect. I think it's gonna look so good with these fish. It's gonna look smart. Okay, bag them up. Let's do it. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. This one's, so is this one guarding? Yeah. Yeah, so that would be a female guarding the entrance to the cave. Oh yeah, because the male stays higher, yeah. like there, and then when anything came close then, he sort of sawed it off, yeah. which is funny because he's small in comparison to the, all the other fish around him. Oh, they look so good. Yeah. 
And not to forget as well, the Lupies up the top. How many of these are we going to have, Matt? Do you think um, it's about? A good little group, so I reckon, you know, five or six, I think would be a nice size group in there. Awesome, yes. Yeah, so I thought you were going to say like three, and I'll be like, oh. Well, you know, you're going to have a lot of rock dwellers, so we just need to make sure there's space for everyone. There's tons of space. I sent you that photo, That's didn't it. I? It looks lovely. It's, there's so much space. Um, I've added some plants to the back area. Nice. Because I, I read, um, doing my research of yep. Lake Tanganyika, that there are plants there in areas yeah. of the East Shore. It's just not really where the cichlids are. But, you know, yeah, exactly. we can keep a bit of interest. The it'll... good thing is with plants, it'll break up the site, so they won't be able to see each other all the time, and it means that aggression won't be as bad. So, okay, yeah, brilliant. if you can break up the sight lines, it makes it a little bit easier. Good, good. Because we're assuming that these are going to breed as well, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, the multi, the multifasciatus, the yeah. shell dwellers, they've bred in here. That's where that little baby's come from. Um, so they definitely, you know, they'll definitely a pair, so that'll be a really nice little group. Yeah. You know, the Julie should breed fairly easily. I'm trying um, to get the baby, I haven't seen the baby yet. I did see it peek out just a minute ago. Oh, there we go. Just see it. Oh, we're back in then. <laughs> right, we'll get them out. colours on his face. Yeah, because we're looking at getting a male and a yeah. female, so Matt's thinking that this one's a boy because of the colours. He yeah, said no. this, not me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. sweet. So will you order a group in, yeah? Yeah, we'll get another group of sort of six or seven in, and then we'll separate out maybe a couple of girls. I don't think they're going to struggle to sell. I mean, they're beautiful. Oh, they're lush. They're really lovely fish. It's only like, it's, it's not like they're massively like colour colour like, you know, the Malawis beneath them. But they've got just enough on them, I think, to be high interest you yeah. know I love them yeah the colors in the fins as well you exactly see. that's yeah that's the thing and the way they trail off like that mm. kind of like a liar tail yeah awesome I'm gonna feed them all in the so what have we got so we've got the Julie de Cromus if I pop them Julie all down de Cromus there, how many of the Julies are uh, there six in there okay cool and then we've got the little group of shell dwellers in that one shell dwellers and the shells and the shells yeah and then we've got the stunning little group of the lupi the lupi going nuts nice little group of six Sweet. Of them. And then we've got the fairy as well. Yeah, the fairy's on the far end. Fairy there. cichlid. Um, Matt will know it. What is the proper name for the fairy cichlid? Uh, it's a brashard eye. <laughs> Knows every single one. It doesn't even <laughs> refer to them as the common ones. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's just take them home. Not us, but I mean me. I've got to stay at work. You've got to work. <laughs> And you guys know the rules. Safety first. <laughs> fish. Oops. So we've got the fish, they're almost ready to go in. I just need to turn those lights off. They're very bright, probably gonna spook them. I'm gonna have to put them on, obviously, but let's let them temperature acclimate. Uh, that means match the temperature in the bag to the water with the lights off, just so they can chill for a bit. Oh my goodness, this is exciting. So there's the Julie de Cromus in there. There's the fairy cichlid. Again, we're going to be looking for a pair to go together which some people have said there might be some aggression is issues later on. That's okay, we can sort that out. There's lots of space, so the territory can be divided. By that point, the plants will have hopefully grown in and not just <laughs> been ripped up. Um, interestingly though, the, um, the Maltese, these are the, the shell-dwelling fish, it looks like an empty bag apart from the shells. Now hopefully they, they are in there <laughs> and they're just doing like their namesake and hiding inside. Yeah, I think I just saw a little wiggle. Yeah, a little wiggle inside that middle one. Over this side, we've got the Lulupi, which are, they're chilled. Looking really chilled. Oh, it's gonna be so cool. All right, it's not huge stocking levels. I don't wanna go for that 
tons and tons of fish look that lots of people do. I just think that detracts from the, the cool individual behaviours when you've just got so much going on everywhere. So yeah, I'm just going to keep it low stock and start with. They're going to breed. It's I mean, I'm a breeding expert now, apparently. <laughs> They're going to breed. They're probably, hopefully, going to breed. So we need to keep space for that. And the tank's just going to evolve as we go. There's going to be like loads of cool algae on it and stuff. And yeah, it's going to be uh, the most maintained or most maintenance required tank I've had, I reckon. Right, it's been 25, 30 minutes, something like that. The lights are now on. The fish are completely chilled as well with them on, which is good. So what I want to do is take the bags out and put the fish in there individually. N not one at a time, I mean each group at a time. Just so we can watch the behaviour, first of all. But I think the safest bet to start with is to get the Maltese. Oh, I can see him inside. You can see him inside that shell, waggling around. I mean, I'm going to see them properly in a minute, so I don't know why I'm worried about that. I'm going to get the Maltese, I'm going to put the free shells down there as well. We didn't have any more shells available, so I'm going to order some more just to fill out that middle section and a few at the front, because I think they'll look great. About temperature as well, yeah. So the temperature range is, from what I've read, is between 24 and 28 degrees Celsius. It's a lake in Africa at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, so I'm going to go bang on in the middle. I'm going to do 26, and hopefully that's, you know, that's decent. Then it's covering all sort of areas. I'll put those numbers in Fahrenheit on the screen as well for my American friends. <laughs> but yeah, first of all, I'll take them all out and then I'm gonna I'm gonna put the Maltese in first. Is it multifasciatus? I mean, that's too hard to say. Maltese. Shall dwell in Maltese. <laughs> Right, so I think the best thing to do with this is just to transfer the shells with the fish in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to reach in and pick them out. And I think the fish will stay inside probably. Try and keep them together. And then I'll have, there we go, success. Put them down in the middle and they'll know exactly where their base camp is. I can see them in there now. I don't know if they push them around and think, this is all sort of stuff that I I need to to watch and, and learn, because, I mean, should I be putting these in there in a certain way? I don't know. I mean, I think this one's got some air trapped in it, but that's all right. They'll wriggle that out, I guess, eventually. I'll just leave that. I'm just going to leave it like that. There we go. Looking good. Right in the middle. Center stage. <laughs> okay, awesome. Look, they're just starting to sort of move now. It might be a while, while before we see them sort of come out properly, but that is so cool, isn't it? <laughs> Right, might as well put the next fish in and we just get some sort of movement that might make these guys feel more comfortable like acting like a diver fish or something like that i don't know oh yes straight away going down to those rocks i've made perfect look and again look right there's a, a nice cave look that goes right in there and actually there's a gap the other side, I think I saw it before, oh, struggling to focus. I think those guys will work it out though. Yeah, I can just about see it. It comes all the way around and then they can pop out this side as well. So that'll be really cool to see. Hopefully they utilize that. I think they'll just push the sand around, make it easier for themselves, but cool. This is so cool. I quite like the fact that like you've got to look for them. I mean, eventually I think they're gonna be a lot more sort of out in the open once they settle in and there isn't someone with a giant camera pointing right at them. Need to turn that up a bit so we can actually see inside. There we go. Hello. This is your little cave. I hope you are liking this little cave. <laughs> okay, there we go. Starting to get a bit more confident now. Okay, okay, there we go. I'm going to back off and zoom in. So hopefully they feel confident enough to come out because they'll be very aware that I'm here. This is so cool. There's a Maltese. Maltese, no sign of the Maltese yet. There's plenty of time. So these guys are right inside that cave, which is perfect. Just so you can see for reference where we are. Back sort of section, front section, which is cool because I think that's where we're going to get more sort of action in this front front area. Oh, there we go. There's one coming out. Hello. Look at this one being brave. Already coloured up nicely. There's some good colours on them. Look at that one. You can see the blues. You can see the, you see the yellows. Oh, this is so cool. I love it. Thing is with cichlids, you just get personality, don't you? They're not like a tetra. They're, well, saying that, the Colombian tetras, tetras are pretty cool. Um, like most tetras, they just sort of do their thing and they keep doing the same thing. Whereas you can clearly see with a cichlid, look, it's trying to work out what's going on and like its territories, sussing it all out. Oh, this will be a good place to maybe lay some eggs. It's definitely probably not what it's saying right now. <laughs> 
Sorry, I'll stop that. <laughs> okay, oh, round the back side. Okay, so hopefully the Maltese are going to see these guys exploring. This is so cool. I am absolutely loving this. I'm a cichlid man. I think I've become a cichlid man, let's be honest. And from what I've heard as well, cichlids are a lot... Like They're pretty much like most of the fish in, in salt water. Most salt water fish behave in a cichlid manner, even the sort of big shoaling ones as well. But I, I, I like it. I love it. I'm loving this. Oh, these guys are getting really active now. Look, they're doing a little back and forth, testing their own little boundaries and that. We you say we put the next fish in? There we go, there's the fairy in. Very sick, He's looking chilled straight away, look. Not not freaked out, not trying to hide. Instantly going to explore. Let me turn this lighting down, it's not actually how it looks. Okay, that's how we're, there. That's exactly how we're looking. So I don't think that's too bright. You know, it was looking very glary just a second ago, wasn't it? Oh, Maltese are out, yes. We'd really like to see that baby soon. And the good thing about this group is that they've all been living together harmoniously in that, ha harmoniously? <laughs> harmoniously in that tiny little tank back at the um back at back at the aquatic shop so they're going to do really well aren't they in something as much bigger like this i mean we are going to add to them or they're going to add to themselves obviously i'm too excited to keep talking for a minute let me get the final fish in the lulupi okay so some of these guys They've gone out in the open, they're swimming right around, gone straight to the middle as well. And then some of them went into the rock, which is good. That's, that's what we want, a mix of everything. God, look at this. Some proper, like, cool stuff going on, isn't there? These guys weren't in the same tank together. The, the Lulupi were up at the top section, weren't they? But at the moment, no aggression, nothing like that. Look at that, and the Maltese in the middle, all exploring. Oh, this is so cool. I mean, that is all the fishing for now which kind of doesn't look that much, does it, in this whole big tank. But eventually I'm going to get the sardines as well. And then we can have a top a top sort of dwelling. Is that the right word? Top top dwelling. Open swimmers is what some of you guys called it in the comments. So yeah, it'll be cool to see them up in that top section. Then the rocks are covered. Oh, so, so cool, isn't it? I'm loving this. There's the Maltese. This guy, completely happy. Look, in and out. This is my home. Where's the baby? It'd be good to see the baby, wouldn't it? Hopefully the baby's there, all safe. But guys, I cannot believe how well this has turned out. I'm, I'm loving it already. I'm loving the simplicity of it. I'm loving the sort of cleanness of it, like the clean lines. But it also, to me, looks, it looks sort of real, but not, do you know what I mean? It looks like we could see something like this in the bottom of a little section of a lake somewhere. So I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out so far. Mm -hmm. 